a very warm namaskar to all present here uh, and especially i want to say thanks to my mentor my guide my teacher when i was doing my bed and mat from vidya bhavan udaipur and especially a special namaskar to uh, dr martin and dr wasif uh, i feel humbled enough and i feel honored to get this opportunity especially by my teacher it has been almost 25 years since i completed my bed and i reconnected with ma'am an year ago so it has been a very nice opportunity given to me aur mujhe bahut acha lag raha hai ki main thoda sa prayas kar rahi hu apni ma'am ke samne bolne ka let us see if i <laughs> main unke expectations mein kitna khari utar pati hu ya nahi lekin aap sab log seniors hain aapke sath reh ke mujhe each uh, experience yes, yes, and learning yes, experience yes, for me so uh, thank you so much ma'am and now i'll start my lecture please allow me to present the screen the topic for today's lecture is exploring creativity among students for sustainable development there is a quote by etan et al in 2017 they have completed a study and they said by enabling students to make deeper connections embrace and work through complexity develop empathy and imagine new ways of thinking being and acting in the world we can prepare the next generations to envision and realize a more sustainable future here the more important things are deeper connections as well as to develop empathy and what is most important is to imagine the new ways of thinking not only thinking but being in the world and as well as acting when we are talking about sustainable development goals so we all know that in the 2030 agenda by 2030 the sustainable development goals have been uh, considered as the 17 goals and they are classified under major five components when we talk about them the first one that is people's physical and mental health it includes no poverty koi bhi jo hai wo garibi rekha se niche na ho zero hunger koi bhi bhooka na soye good health and well being and when we are talking about good health and well being it includes both the physical as well as the mental health quality education as well as gender equality so all these sustainable development goals are considered under the first major component people's physical and mental health and when we see at this particular uh, component and the different goals we see that in the schools the different subjects which are being taught to the students be it biology or psychology economics sociology history somewhere and somehow all these aspects related to the physical and mental health are being included in the syllabus too the next major component is mindset of future social progression hum ye dekhna chahte hain ki jo samaj hai wo pragati kare lekin samaj ke pragati karne ke liye kya soch vichar hona chahiye क्या दिशा और दशा जो है उसका निर्धारण हम करें ये सब निर्भर करता है कि हमारी सोच कैसी है और हमारी जो सोच है उसमें हम स्पेशली जब बात कर सकते हैं सोशल प्रोग्रेशन की तो एफोर्डेबल क्लीन वाटर एंड सैनिटेशन की बात होती है क्लीन एनर्जी की बात होती है क्योंकि एनर्जी जो है वो हम सबको चाहिए अपने डेली हाउस होल्ड वर्क के लिए भी इंडस्ट्री के लिए भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के लिए भी लेकिन ये जो एनर्जी है ये क्लीन एनर्जी हो it also includes employment and this employment is related to the decent work which helps in the economic growth to industry innovation infrastructure of any country fairness and justice where we are specially talking about reduced inequalities hum chahte hain ki pura samaj aage badhe rashtra aage badhe vishwa aage badhe to uske liye jo avashyakta hai usme sabse important ye bhi hota hai ki samantaye ho कहीं भी असमानताएं इस पूरे के पूरे विश्व में न हो जब समाज की प्रगति की बात आती है एंड इट टॉक्स अबाउट द सस्टेनेबल सिटीज एंड कम्युनिटीज टू 
the third major component is related to the care for the environment and which includes life below water when we are talking about the oceans the different uh, living beings organisms which are in the ocean life on land it includes human being along with the different animals flora fauna everything is included in that responsible consumption and production is sansar mein jitne bhi living beings hain to unke jeevit rehne ke liye bahut aavashyak hai ki wo consume kare wo chahe wo food consume karne ki baat ho ya water consume karne ki baat ho air aur usi ke sath sath hum jo kuch bhi consume kar rahe hain hum jo consumers hain usme kahin na kahin hum log production jo hai jahan economic aspect aata hai usse bhi related hai and then comes climate change so what action should be taken to see whether we are harming the climate or we are protecting the climate this is very important the next major component is related with reflection on institutions and these institutions can be any kind of institution be it the educational institutions or the institutions which are related with the welfare of the people or the institutions uh, be it the industries or the scientific organizations which help in the development of any country तो ये जो इंस्टीट्यूशंस हैं ये इंस्टीट्यूशंस ऐसे इंस्टीट्यूशंस हों जहां वो पीस जस्टिस की बात करते हैं दे शुड बी स्ट्रॉन्ग इंस्टीट्यूशन ये एस के गोल नंबर 16 में कहा गया है एंड द लास्ट वन द मेजर कंपोनेंट इज ग्लोबल क्रॉस रीजनल पार्टनरशिप अंडर विच कम्स द सेवनटीन गोल पार्टनरशिप फॉर द गोल्स वी वॉन्ट टू अचीव दिस सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स and for this one individual one state or one country cannot work alone akele koi bhi karya nahi kar sakta hai bahut zaruri hai ki aane wale yug mein hum sab ek dusre ke sath collaborate kare aur ye collaboration aur partnership jo hai wo logon ke beech ho sakti hai institution ke beech ho sakti hai countries ke beech ho sakti hai aur hum is tarah se karya kare ki ek dusre ki madad karte hue sustainable development goals jo hain unko hum prapt kar sake so the basic thing which needs to be included in the syllabus is that we as teachers or we as educators should inform as well as uh, make the students aware about the different sustainable goals and to achieve sustainability the key competence which is required for sustainable development basically when we are talking about the key competences only the one is critical thinking we think we think a lot but whatever we are thinking whether it is contributing to the development or protection of the society as well as the environment or not so thinking the pros and cons both is very much essential what is helping what are positive what are the negative thoughts everything needs to be kept in consideration if we want to move forward along with it the next competence is communication अलग अलग देशों में अलग थलग पढ़े हुए लोग कोई सोच विचार रखते हैं उस विचार प्रक्रिया को अगर वो केवल अपने तक सीमित रखते हैं दे आर नॉट एबल टू कम्युनिकेट वट एवर दे हैव डिसाइडेड और वट एवर दे हैव थॉट इन द सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स देन इट इज ऑफ नो यूज हम क्या प्रगति कर रहे हैं विज्ञान के क्षेत्र में या इकोनॉमी के क्षेत्र में या हम लोगों को भूखमरी से बचाने के लिए अपने एनवायरनमेंट को प्रोटेक्ट करने के लिए क्लाइमेट चेंज जो है वो वर्ल्ड को कहीं ऐसी दिशा में ना ले जाए कि जहां जो लोग रह रहे हैं उन्हें बहुत नुकसान हो इसके लिए जो भी लोग जिस प्रकार के कार्य कर रहे हैं सोच रखते हैं जो क्रिटिकल थिंकिंग उनकी है जो एक थॉट प्रोसेस डेवलपमेंट है उन सब में कम्युनिकेशन जो है वो बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट कॉम्पिटेंस है सो व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कोलैबोरेशन इट इज वेरी मच एसेंशियल फॉर द इंडिविजुअल द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन द इंस्टीट्यूशन द स्टेट एज वेल एज द कंट्रीज टू कोलैबोरेट विद ईच अदर बिकॉज वर्किंग इन आइसोलेशन कैन नॉट बी पॉसिबल in this huge world when we are talking about the globalization and the development it is very essential that we all individuals collaborate with each other so the process of collaboration is very much essential this competence need to be developed right from the beginning that is the school level the children who are studying in schools they need to collaborate on the different thought process as the projects they are doing and the decisions they are taking for making any change in the environment so collaboration is another competence and along with it creativity and we all know creativity means when we are designing or creating something new which is out of the box which is not the uh, ancient thinking process and we are following that only 
because we see that in this particular world every other day comes as a challenge we never knew what will be the future so even when the pandemic came it was very new to us until and unless we start thinking about some new ideas or some new techniques or some new thought process which help us to face these challenges we won't be able to survive in the coming centuries and along with creativity comes innovation that is how we can think of something new which will help us in surviving in this particular world so these are the key competences required and when we are talking about sustainability it is subject to human creativity how to sustain how to keep the things which we are receiving from the environment in such a way that they meet not only our needs our present needs but they can be saved for the future for the future generations too so that in case they require they can also use so that sustainability concept is subject to human creative creativity because we humans are the ones who are the most uh, thoughtful individuals the ones with the um, with the, the ones which have the process or the mind in which we can think about new ideas new activities new collaborations and new uh, things to solve the problems so human creativity is very important and when we are talking about the modern sustainable education because right now sustainability has been considered as a uh, very important goal for the future and education is the one uh, which can help us in keeping the world a sustainable uh, one so two most important things are one is creative thinking and another one is creative problem solving because we need to be ready for the near future in which we may face many different kind of problems for example when we are talking about the pandemic no one knew that the whole world will come to a standstill we never knew that we will have so many challenges when we can't move out we have to stay indoors so how to communicate with people how to get things uh, uh, to our place how to uh, tackle with the uh, such a difficult situation for all these we need to think creatively as well as find out some new ideas to solve this particular problem which came in uh, in front of us and for this the students need to learn to associate creativity with sustainability if we want to protect our planet if we want to protect our future where we are talking about the various kind of resources present and if we are utilizing those resources without any kind of thought process that whether they are renewable or not whether we will be able to uh, keep them for the future generations too and how our planet is getting affected so it is very essential that we let the students learn to associate creativity with sustainability that is a very important part and when we are talking about sustainability it should be considered as a holistic approach where all the three parts the environment the economy and the society they all are included we cannot talk about sustainability where we can uh, keep some uh, kind of watertight compartments that environment is altogether different society is different and economy is different no we are living in uh, we are living in a society we are social individuals we need to progress together take help of each other collaborate and for uh, living in this particular world we need to live in the environment live in harmony with the environment protect the environment and while protecting the environment we also need to see that we can survive only if our economy is well if our economy is okay and for economy somewhere and somehow we have to uh, use the environment too or we have to uh, take the things from the environment so all these three the three pillars of sustainability ecology related to environment the social one society and the uh, economical one the economy all three should be considered as a holistic approach and when we are talking about sustainable development there is a, a, a very well known definition being given by brutland commission in 1987 when when they say that development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs we are living in the present we want to meet our needs and for this we are 
doing some or other kind of development be it the society, uh, social development or the economical development or uh, utilizing the different kind of resources being provided to us by the environment but when we use all that but we don't compromise we are not compromising with the future generations because even the future generations will require all those needs and a kind of development in which both are taken into consideration can be called as a sustainable development here i would like to quote a very small story uh, in a parent teacher meeting uh, the parents were called to school and uh, their uh, ward were uh, also there and then the teachers gave some colors and papers to the parents and asked them to draw something the parents drew and afterwards the same colors and the paper was uh, the different paper was given to their uh, children too and they were asked to make some pen paintings or draw something when both were uh, in front of each other after doing their respective works and they presented their work to each other the parents were very happy because the kind of drawings they were made had many colors in them but when the children were asked to show their paintings and their creations they have got uh, very few colors especially black or gray or white something like that so uh, somewhere and somehow then the parents realized that they have used the most color most colorful ones those were used by the parents and what they left for their children were the color were the colors which are not even used in different kind of paintings and all that is a very good example especially whenever i saw this uh, this particular ad advertisement or a story when i read this story immediately the first thing came to my mind sus understanding sustainable development is very easy when we realize that how we are utilizing the resources and in which way if we are using them in excess then somewhere and somehow they are going to end and how the future generations are uh, going to survive because they all will be needing those particular requirements or the resources to and when we are talking about creativity because my uh, paper is about fostering creativity and especially for sustainability i think uh, both of them should be taken into consideration creativity according to robert e franken he has written a book human motivation and in that he wrote that creativity is the tendency to generate creating something new generate recognizing ideas other alternatives or possibilities that may be useful in solving problems communicating with others and entertaining ourselves and others so along with it there are some uh, different uh, definitions i have taken them and according to them creativity is the generation of new product that new product can be both novel that is new as well as any product which is appropriate in a particular scenario and when we are talking about product it can be any idea it can be any object it can be even an assignment being done by the students uh, creativity is also a set of skills and attitudes that has to be learned it is definable it is measurable creativity can be measured and it includes a set of psychological skills all that enhance our learning and along with this learning even our thought process gets affected and then we can generate or produce something new it is also thinking out of the box because uh, whenever uh, we are talking about creativity it is not the same as others have already done or whatever they are doing uh, doing and thinking there need to be something that is altogether different that is new as well as that is appropriate and can be utilized it is also taking ideas and developing them it is not that every time generating a new idea is only creativity if we are taking ideas from somewhere and we are developing them in a different way such that they can be utilized for some sort of problem solving or in uh, different uh, circumstances or different situations that is again creativity and when things are analyzed in diverse and uncommon ways we can take any example for that for example if we are taking a paper and paper is mostly used for writing or in a, a book for printing if we are using that paper in something altogether different if we think that paper can also be utilized for making some flower paper can also be utilized for uh, as a fan paper can also be utilized as a, a wrapping object or or there are many many different things there can be so the thinking in diverse and uncommon ways that is also included under creativity 
when we are talking about creativity and sustainable development both we can use creativity as a weapon when uh, we are battling against uh, different odds or the different problems of sustainability creativity the quality to generate something new the quality to think something new the quality to think of different solutions to the problems related to sustainability that is very essential because creativity enables an individual to view problems from different perspectives and that can be included in divergent thinking too creativity also enables us to formulate new solutions the solutions which haven't been ever thought of the solutions which can be more appropriate in a particular situation and it also enables making new connections we know about two objects two things two thoughts uh, two uh, ideas but making or using them in a very different set of connection a very different set of design which can be more appropriate in a particular situation and when we are thinking our thinking process shouldn't move in one direction only it should be more flexible because every individual every organization every problem every situation is different uh, and when there are so much diversity and differences so we need to think in different ways and we need to uh, change our thought process too if there is any uh, such instances where it is required creativity also empowers students so that they can work across disciplines so right now in today's words as i have already said we cannot segregate things or classify them into different watertight compartments every one idea is associated with other one or every uh, new thing or thought process thought uh, or done can be utilized in a situation similar to that or in any situation which is altogether different but that particular idea can be utilized so it is essential to empower students with creativity if we want them to work across different disciplines right now even um, in nep 2020 it has been uh, emphasized that multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary thought process and education is very much essential because knowing about one particular subject or discipline in detail won't help us in surviving in the future there are different disciplines different subjects different areas even the problem areas where we need to uh, include our thought process or utilize it in solving a problem related to altogether different field too so multidisciplinary interdisciplinary or for all that students need to be more creative what education do can do to foster creativity for sustainable development so especially we see when uh, developing countries like india we talk about the most uh, important two challenges faced by education we see are one is under development and the other one is globalization when we say under developed even the skills of individuals are under developed even the capacities of individuals are under developed we haven't uh, uh, tapped to the full potential of our country be it the resources even it includes even the human resources too or the uh, different uh, kinds of uh, physical resources or natural resources all these are underdeveloped and this has uh, resulted as a very big challenge for us if we want to be in unison or if we want to uh, be, uh, be in the line with the developed countries and the other one is globalization there are no boundaries nowadays the whole world is one uh, common village we can say or uh, the whole world has come very closer so when we are talking about globalization how to collaborate with the different countries other one how to be in the same line how to be strong enough competitive enough to be competing in this uh, world with the other countries these challenges are very important and to face these particular challenges we need to foster creativity and for this the students especially in the classrooms in the school education system in the higher education system they need to develop new ideas so that it can contribute to new knowledge and this new knowledge is going to help all of us in dealing with the difficult and uncertain situations and that is very much essential
for this the different kind of uh, educational strategies which can be included in the classroom especially by the teachers one is flexibility the flexibility of thought process the flexibility of doing things even the flexibility of uh, uh, reading a lesson the flexibility of interpreting their own uh, thought and ideas from a particular lesson or whatever is being taught in the class so one thing which is very very important is flexibility we shouldn't restrict to only one idea or one pedagogy or any uh, one kind of uh, uh, aid which we are using for make the children aware about a particular subject the other educational strategy can include mental exploration we all know the children and their uh, brains are a storehouse they have so many capacities hidden and for this it is very essential that we provide such kind of infrastructural situations and we facilitate the students in such uh, through many activities so that they can use their minds they can use their brain they can use their previous knowledge their thought process in developing many different ideas or giving different kind of suggestions as well as the thoughts they are interpreting from a certain uh, lecture or whatever is being taught in the classroom two more important things which need to be kept in view one is the quality of thinking and another one is the quality of learning when we are uh, talking about the quality of thinking so not only whatever is taught and then the students are mere rote learners reflective thinking is very much essential so when we are talking about quality of thinking we need the students to be uh, acting as uh, are able to give reflections for this we have seen that uh, in some uh, uh, since last uh, a few years the reflective diaries are being asked by teachers to be written by the students the next particular concept or a topic or a subject is being taught to the children they need to reflect upon that particular idea being presented by the teacher then only we can uh, feel then only we can understand how differently uh, the different students think because they every individual is unique every individual is a product of different kind of uh, developmental sequences Uh, because they belong to different races different communities different social and economic backgrounds as well as the educational backgrounds cultural backgrounds so what they think is very much different and when any idea is presented to them they need to reflect upon it in their own particular individual ways along with quality of thinking quality of learning is very important and here we can talk about the multidisciplinary learning the learning from one particular topic or a subject how it is useful and how it can be utilized in understanding a concept from some altogether different subject too that is very important and for this divergent and convergent thinking both can be used by the teacher in the classroom there can be many different uh, uh, solutions to a particular problem so looking for all those possible solutions that is divergent thinking so let the students explore let the student think in the different manner they uh, are uh, taking a particular process or a concept and then they can ask to analyze that their thought process they can be analyzed to the different kind of uh, um, they can be asked to analyze the different solutions they are thinking about a particular problem and for this free and reciprocal discussion is very important uh, the teacher should encourage free discussion in the classroom what we have seen in most of the classrooms especially when you are talking about the standard classrooms of a particular school we have seen that when teacher is presenting something to the students and when the uh, when the transaction of uh, content is being done students are hardly given any time or any opportunity to discuss on that topic to discuss and present their own views and reciprocal discussion is very important when the teacher is presenting the idea when the teacher is presenting a content the students can be allowed should be allowed to th think freely about it their own assumptions their own conceptions misconceptions and what is their thought process and it should be reciprocal in between the teacher and the students until and unless we allow the students to think freely 
when i was talking about flexibility that needs to be uh, that needs to be followed in the classrooms too i have already uh, i have hardly seen any uh, any classroom especially when i am talking about the standard kind of setup in the classes of the schools that the discussion part is given the least importance in the classes the students are not allowed to open their minds to present their views to ask questions and for this active learning method can be a very uh, fruitful one where they are not mere passive listeners but they are the active learners they are the active participants students can be active participants only when they are doing by themselves we always say about the maxim of teaching learning by doing but how many of us how many of the teachers allow the students to learn by doing themselves they need to complete their syllabus for them what is most important is completing the syllabus and taking the examinations even the evaluation system when we talk about it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, uh, includes creativity this is what we have seen in most of the cases brainstorming methods can be utilized as strategy in the classrooms if we want to foster creativity we can take the different topics which are related to the sustainable development goals and for this i have already said that sustainability the meaning of sustainability the meaning of sustainable development the agenda of our sustainable development the 2030 sustainable development goals all these need to be included in the curriculum as well as the transaction process in which we are uh, transacting the the content and students need to know what are the different difficult situation the whole world is going to face and what will be required in the new future if we want to protect our planet if we want to protect our future what are the different uh, topics related to sustainability which needs to be tackled in the classrooms and as we all say that young minds are powerhouse of uh, Uh, knowledge powerhouse of new thoughts and ideas so we should tap them young fostering creativity is something or cultivating creativity is something that can be done through mindfulness and when we talk about mindfulness mindfulness means taking some time giving some times to the time to the students to ponder to pause to think to recollect their ideas to Uh, to pay attention to one particular thing mindfulness means when the mind is being directed and the mind is mind is not distracted so enough time should be given in the classrooms for the students to think and this is very very important they should be asked to concentrate on one particular subject or topic or problem or solution or thought or idea they want to elaborate or develop so culti uh, creativity can be cultivated using mindfulness too in the classroom but we have normally seen that students are not given the time to ponder think and respond they are the uh, the uh, time gap being given to the students to respond is very very short we should give them enough time so that they can think they can concentrate uh, they can uh, they can bring back the learning <coughs> to their mind to their thoughts and ideas which they have learnt in all these years about the different concepts of the life or environment or society so mind being mindfulness is one more strategy that can be utilized problem solving approach problem based learning we are talking about since last many many years but whether we are exactly helping the students or we are exactly giving the students the idea and the time where they can find out the problems they can uh, zero down on some individual problems according to them as well as <clears throat> free uh, hand is given to them in solving a particular problem and for this uh, the projects can be given to students <coughs> either in the form of individual projects or group projects for example if we are talking about uttarakhand because martin sir has said maybe they will be coming to uttarakhand next year and it will be a very uh, uh, great honor and surprise for us if we could meet him and uh, learn something from him so when we are talking about a problem solving approach and i am talking about individual and group projects if we allow the students in the class 
especially if I'm, I'm talking about Uttarakhand, the students from a government school in a remote area in Uttarakhand, if they are asked, what are the different problems they face daily? There are many problems they can share with the teachers and these problems can include uh, the commutation because the schools are situated at very far off place from the villages and the students have to walk a lot. Along with it, the different natural calamities, especially when we are talking about there are many rivers and the terrain is very hilly, walking is very difficult and everywhere uh, the bridges are not uh, present. So sometimes they even have to cross rivers. Crossing rivers when, uh, when the rainy season is on, when the flow of river is very fast, that can be one problem which uh, they can uh, present in front of the students, uh, teachers. There are other problems which they can say is about uh, the long distance commutation they are coming and if the teacher is not present. Most of the schools are one teacher uh, schools only. And if we are, they are reaching there and they uh, don't have books in the library and if even if they are asked for a blended mode of learning or if they are asked to uh, see the videos being uh, presented by different teachers and if they are asked to watch the uh, tv channels for example we are uh, talking about the different tv uh, channels related to education only and if light is not there and if uh, the uh, connection internet connection is not there then how they are going to watch those particular videos they this can another problem in front of them other problem can be they haven't got any parents at home who can help them in understanding a particular concept. So these are the different problems if they are posing in front of their teachers. And then they can be asked to work on, to think about these problems, to gather the data and think of some possible solutions, the easiest solutions which can be utilized, which can be done to solve these particular problems. So problem solving approach, it can be given to students along with uh, the uh, curriculum being transacted and uh, for example a, a particular uh, kind of a particular topic in science or social sciences or languages is being given to them they can be asked to find out problem by themselves and then start working on it when the students are enough enough space enough time the thought process and right kind of guidance then they can learn about uh, new ideas they can innovate something new they can come upon uh, a, a a new solution to a problem which they have been facing since last many many years for this the expository methods can also be used and uh, in this particular methods the students can be asked to uh, to find out the uh, to collect the different data where they can even validate the solutions they are uh, telling us multiple intelligence theory we all know that every individual is different especially when we are talking about children and in uh, children the intelligence can be different depending upon whether it is verbal intelligence or it is related to some special intelligence. There are a few students who are very good in numbers. There are a few students who are very good in, uh, uh, in words or vocabulary. There are a few students who are very good in analyzing or mathematical ability. So each and every individual student has got different kind of intelligence in which he or she is uh, capable enough of performing. So we can include those students and different kind of projects and uh, the problems can be posed in front of them the lessons could also be designed in the cross curricular form cross curricular in the sense uh, the different uh, curriculum the subjects being taught to them as well as the co-curricular activities be, which are being organized in their institutions for example if i'm talking about any kind of sports or if i'm talking about a, a cultural program being organized in the school and if we are talking about uh, what are the uh, different traditional uh, traditional uh, sol uh, solutions to the problems being faced by a particular uh, society or a particular culture so they can be asked to perform a dance drama they can be asked to uh, perform a, a, a ballet on a particular problem and how it is solved. These are a few things which can be utilized. And for this, we can incorporate and integrate art, music, and culture. But we have seen that uh, with the formal education system, our art, music, and culture has taken a secondary place. Uh, whenever I go to take viva of beard students and uh, uh, cultural heritage is one of the important part of their EPC curriculum. 
so it is very surprising and disheartening to see that students don't even know about their culture if you are asking about a particular dance form if we are asking about why they a particular place or a tradition or a ritual is very important and why it is connected to their culture they are not able to answer they can't even understand their own local languages too even the music forms why a particular song is being sung in a particular occasion how they are interrelated to each other and how they somehow show the solutions to the problems being faced by individuals so it is very essential that art music culture where the students can uh, play freely uh, they can draw something they can compose their own music or they can uh, write the lyrics to they can collect the different cultural heritage stories folklore which show something which is related to sustainability that can be done too here i would like to uh, give a very small example uh, in the garhwali culture the in the uttarakhandi culture there is a very common feature that when the girl after her marriage is leaving her place she uh, she is uh, she gives uh, something back to the parents too not in the form of monetary money or something like that but something which the parents can remind uh, can uh, use can uh, uh, use in reminding her many times so they have started a new tradition in which uh, this is called as methi andolan maybe you must have read about it and in the methi andolan the girl who is leaving her house she plants a tree and that tree is uh, sim uh, that tree symbolizes the particular girl and the different unmarried the uh, girls different unmarried girls and the other relatives and the family of the girl they take care of that plant as their own daughter so a very good example of how sustainability uh, can be included can be uh, connected with the culture the cultural traditions uh, one more thing when the new bride uh, goes to uh, her house to the in laws house the first thing she does is she worships the uh, water source you know to in uttarakhand they are called as dharas springs we can say or falls falls are a very big one but dharas are small ones which are utilized for drinking water so it symbolizes that water is something which is considered very very important and if the new bride who is an addition to the family is uh, worshiping the water the source of water so it shows the importance of water and the sources in our lives so how even some songs are there which songs are related with the uh, how to protect the environment the water resources the land resources because in turn they are going to help us in surviving so students can be given free hand students can be given enough time and space where they can write their own songs where they can uh, collect the folklores where they can uh, talk to their ancestors their uh, their grandparents and other people living in the villages and other communities how they are able to survive and how they are able to help in the sustainable development of uh, any uh, particular aspect if we are talking about technology is something which we cannot uh, uh, which we cannot uh, uh, leave uh, this is something which needs to be incorporated in each and every work because technology is something which has brought us closer and it has made things easier to even the communication the presentation the collaboration uh, is very easy with the help of uh, technologies so the students can be encouraged to write blogs brainstorming mapping tools can be used infographics pictorial representation is something uh, as well as web quest which can be used by the students to find solutions to the problems picto chart also visual story i read about various web quest and it was very interesting to see that the students were given any particular topic be it related to the communicable diseases or even the life during the pandemic the role of the society or uh, uh, any uh, cultural tradition related to the sustainability or uh, how we can how we can uh, protect our land or how we can uh, keep the water clean and how we can help the individuals which are living under the ocean uh, we all know that <clears throat> plastic is in use in all over country in all over world and i have uh, seen a, a special example in which the milk packets which we use we always cut a very small part of it from the above you know so the main part it is always dumped in the 
dustbin but the small parts sometimes they go through the drain to the water bodies and when they enter the uh, the animals which are living under water it creates a lot of problem for them so how you, students can find a solution to the problem where the water bodies can be protected from these plastics and other kind of pollutants students can be asked to find out different data as well as different uh, uh, study material or the work done with the help of web and then they can write their own solutions with the help of different pictures even they can form a visual story for that which can be presented they can click photographs of different water bodies uh, the differences where a water body is situated close to any industrial organization or where uh, any open nala is a uh, uh, open drain is being opening into the river or the water body and polluting it and how any other different water body which is protected and no kind of pollutants are being uh, flown into it so they can present it the help of a visual story or a visual diary so technology can be used to let the students think about different problems or the different topics related to sustainability which are included in their psychology uh, syllabus the biology one when we are talking about uh, the physical well being of individuals when we are talking about the mental well being of individuals in psychology and in biology students learn about human body the brain all these things so how to incorporate these particular lessons in a form where students are given free hand they are given time to think they are given time to explore they are given opportunities to find up or different aspects of it and then present it in the form of visual story or visual diary can be a very uh, nice opportunity for the students and we can see the different uh, solutions being uh, being uh, thought by the students and at the core of it is very important that the teachers who are teaching in the classrooms and in the educational system we recognize and promote creativity we should encourage students for risk taking it is not that if you are writing an answer by yourself or you are giving a solution which according to you is the best one and we if we are grading it in a particular way that those students who have got the uh, different ideas if the ideas it is not essential that every time the idea is going to be right or wrong sometimes we should see whether the students have thought of something very new which didn't came to any other individuals mind so promoting creativity is very essential i would like to uh, i would like to share an example along with it for example we have seen that when students are asked to make make science projects or any different kind of projects in different subjects or when students are asked to make charts and diagrams and we have seen that teachers always hang the uh, the charts on the walls which charts look the most beautiful ones or the most perfect ones or the charts which the students uh, which are not made by the students which are made by the their parents or in the market now we have seen this or even the science project they are presenting or the model or the, they are presenting it has been made by some uh, some professionals in the shops so the student who has done the model made the model by himself or the student who has made the chart or the pictorial graph by himself if himself or herself if we are not promoting it if we are not hanging it on the walls the student will be discouraged and if we are always saying in the class the answer is wrong you should again read the chapter and what i have told you you have not said that thing and this idea looks so absurd this is totally wrong then we won't be able to foster creativity for for uh, fostering creativity this may be some uh, some repetition open ended projects it is not essential that every time the students are being told ki there is a frame and you have to write on that only you have to work on that only they can be given some open ended projects where their own ideas thought process uh, the different uh, the divergent thinking can come into force uh, one more thing that is passion projects genius are it uh, it uh, um, catch my attention because i have seen that 
normally whatever project is being given to the students is always related to the topic the topics which are given in the books the topics which are related to or which are in the syllabus sometimes the students can be asked to work on any kind of problem or any project which he or she feels interested and passionate about if uh, uh, some if uh, at any time i i if i am a student if in if any teacher asks me what is something you would like to work on so uh, according to my own experiences or according to my own interest i would like to work on the culture the cultural heritage of our country or or of uh, my society the society i live in or the community garhwali community i belong to because somewhere i feel that they have uh, left their culture uh, they have not uh, protected it and there are many different uh, things which are included in that that is not altogether uh, related to our culture so that is something i am very passionate about i am very much interested so for fostering creativity it is essential that we should keep in mind about the different interest of the children sometimes they can given some problems they can given some projects where they can find a topic by themselves in which they are most interested because when students are interested when students are curious and they are given free hand and they are working on a topic they are very passionate about the more and more ideas are going to flow and they can find many different solutions to that too uh, along with it with one thing which we lack especially as teachers in the classrooms that is classroom collaboration and team building we hardly let the students work in collaboration we always ask them to work in uh separately don't tell uh, what you are doing to other one don't show your work don't talk in the class when you are writing something or drawing something don't take anything from each other i'm not talking about the examination system or during the exam hours i'm not talking about uh, when the students are giving a particular exam that is uh, grade being graded but when students are sitting in a classroom and uh, they are given some work to do we should encourage collaboration because the collaboration which they learn during their school hours is very much important when they enter any profession or in the uh, society or in the uh, world where they need to work or collaborate with each other any individual can't be a team uh, member a very good team member with good amount of contribution being given by him or her unless they learn collaboration in the classrooms itself creative arts can be utilized implementing creative arts uh, for creativity arts is something which can be <coughs> utilized by teachers in the classrooms to foster creativity uh, be it uh, music or dance or drawing something or uh, uh, making uh, uh, something with the wood or um, soil uh, mud anything different in which the arts can be utilized because that is very much essential uh, journaling and blogging uh, i have included this because when some individuals has got some ideas and they want that to be uh, read by different individuals and they want uh, them to be uh, them to be reciprocated or reflected upon because when anyone is journaling or blogging Uh, they will receive some comments they will receive some suggestions they can receive some uh, negative comments too so some positive comments too but it will help them in uh, the reciprocal discussion i am i was saying about or the reflections i was saying about games can be utilized and uh, making creativity a grading criteria can be a, a very good initiative by the teachers their original ideas new ideas uh, unique ideas uh, of students any unique kind of representation which is different and which can be utilized any uh, which is appropriate in a particular situation those needs to be in the grading criteria so that we can encourage students not to be the rote learners who just mug up the uh, content and just write it down we as teachers need to evaluate those answers or the work or the project being done by them in the criteria of creativity to if they are creative enough if they have done something new something which is different which can be utilized in different situations they need to be given some uh, edge or some extra marks or some good grades for that uh, there is a statement by richard florida in 2004 where she says where creativity goes and by extension wherever talent goes 
innovation and economic growth are sure to follow. It is very essential that when students are allowed to be more creative, to be thinkers, to generate something new, that means they have got talent. And those talented individuals, when they uh, bring something new, this newness always helps in the economic growth too. We have seen many startups. The uh, last uh, year was the year of startups. We have read about it. This in newspapers too. There are different ideas being coming by different individuals. Th those particular individuals who are, have don't have a very sound or a very uh, professional kind of educational background. Even those individuals have also given such ideas and have started something new the new startups we talk about the innovations we talk about and this has helped them in the economic growth of themselves as well as the country too when we are when we are talking about creativity creativity drives the society towards sustainability and this sustainability is achieved only through the capacity for imagining and visioning we want to imagine the coming future the coming world then we have to imagine what are the different solutions uh, for the problems which we will be facing. So until and unless we imagine, we keep on imagining, until and unless we have a very uh, forthcoming vision, a very far-sighted vision, we won't be able to uh, drive our society towards sustainability. And for that, we as a society, we as individuals, even as students and teachers need to be creative enough. Uh, and the last slide I would like to say, uh, when we see at the limits of the planetary resources, so we see that our planet Earth has limited resources, the different kind of whatever resources we are talking about. So there is a need to ultimately resort to the ultimate renewable resource that is human genuity, ingenuity and creativity. We as humans are the most important resources. and we as humans, when are creative enough, we can help in sustaining the planet in such a way that we give ample opportunities for the coming generation to survive, sustain, and live the life with all the needs being provided to them in whichever way they want it to be. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the patient listening.